Welcome to the new garage. I just moved in and I got all the lights put up and I'm loving it. But today's project to cut to the chase is getting the K24 ready for the engine swap in the 280Z. So my goals are for this to be kind of a daily driver, but I do want to go forced induction. I picked this guy up from uh, Engine Recycler. It's a K24A2 from an 06 to 08 TSX. But we want to do some maintenance items before we put it in the car. And I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do. It may not be the same for everybody depending on your goals, but I'll kind of explain my rationale. So here's everything that I got in order to get this engine revitalized. This is actually the original harmonic balancer, so you can update that or replace it if you want to. And then I ended up getting a timing chain kit off of eBay from a seller in Japan. So there's quite a few of these and they'll just bundle up all of the OEM Honda parts for you to change out the timing chain and all the guides and the tensioner. And then I ended up buying some of these dowel pins that go in the back of the camshaft and that allows you to keep the cams at top dead center while you put the timing chain on. And I will be changing out the VTC gear. So the stock VTC gear on the K24 only allows you to advance the timing up to like 20 or 25 degrees, but the engine really benefits from having up to 40 or 45 degrees of advancement with some performance mods. So I believe you can buy like a K20 Type R VTC gear that's stock and that allows advancement up to 50 degrees, but that could allow for some interference in the engine if the ECU accidentally commands 50 degrees of advancement. So there are a couple ways to really ensure that you don't advance the engine too much. You can buy a dowel pin and put that inside of the VTC gear to prevent that advancement. Or you can buy a machined VTC gear from someone like HPT Autosports, which is what I did. And this is machined to limit it at 40 degrees of advancement. And I did tape off like the intake runners and gave it a quick power wash to clean it up a little bit. It's still pretty dirty, but that'll help keep any dirt out of the engine once I open up this front timing chain cover. But the first order of business is one of the toughest, getting the crank bolt loosened. But this method here, getting some ridiculous torque, helped me break it loose using this special pulley tool for Hondas. And even if you think the engine oil is drained, it's probably not. Now I've already loosened up these spark plugs, but I'm going to leave them in the cylinder head actually, but I'm just gonna have them hanging on by like one thread so that way the air can escape when I'm turning the engine over. This is the crankshaft sensor. This is the VTC solenoid. So this actually supplies differing oil pressure to either advance or retard the timing of this gear. So these two bolts have a centering piece right here in the middle of the bolt. The rest of them do not. So one curiosity of mine was how tight the chain is from factory while it's still assembled. So this works by oil pressure, but it is a ratcheting mechanism. So even though the engine hasn't been ran in a while, it should still be pretty tight. And the reason I wanted to check this is because some people will tighten this down pretty strongly by hand or by using a pry bar, but I definitely don't want to over tighten it. So I thought I would check now to see how tight it was and try to match that once I install the new chain. It's not like crazy tight. RTV all over this thing. And while it's upright, I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil pan off while it's in this position. So all the oil and dirty crap will be in the oil pan. And down on this sprocket right here, there is an arrow for top dead center of the crankshaft. And then the valve train will be top dead center when this line and this line are matched up and meeting in the middle. All right, so our cams are in top dead center and our crankshaft down here, you probably can't see, but there's an arrow right there matching the arrow above it. And since we have the balance shaft oil pump, you can see down here, the indication is this arrow to this sprocket right here has a dimple on it. A lot of people doing the K24 engine swaps choose to swap on a K20 oil pump. It has much less rotational mass than this K24 pump. When going for raw power or just upping the revs of the engine, the smaller K20 pump is the way to go. But it does have one drawback. 
vibration. Honda made this complex balance shaft oil pump for a reason, and it's much more expensive as well. The rotational mass helps reduce the vibrations of the engine. Since I'm not going full on race car and I'm keeping the revs near stock, I'll be keeping the K24 oil pump for now. One thing that is a little strange is this oil pump guide right here is kind of loose. I'm not sure if that's normal, but otherwise I might replace these guides. And more RTV right here. Basically every surface has RTV on it. So since I have the cam locks, what I'm going to do is go ahead and lock these cams while I'm at top dead center. So the camshafts are locked. So now I'm not going to rotate the engine. I'm just going to put some slight back pressure on the chain in the opposite direction. And this little orange tab will go up and then we can put a pin in there to hold it in place. So the tensioner isn't at full tightness. And now we can remove the tensioner. And this is the oil pressure inlet. So that oil pressure actually pushes the piston out some. So since my tensioner on the oil chain was loose, I'm gonna go ahead and change out all of those components on the oil pump. This is the OEM tensioner for the oil pump. Not cheap, this is like 125, 150 bucks. And these are all the K24 oil pump components. If you're doing a swap to the K20 oil pump, you will need different part numbers. If you're keeping the OEM balance chain uh, oil pump, there's a way to keep it in time as you work on it. So this actually right here is a service hole for a six millimeter shaft. So I got to drill a bit as close to that as possible. And this will keep the balance shaft pump from rotating. And while you're working on the oil pump, you do have the option of porting that on your own. It doesn't look too bad. You can just take a Dremel and kind of smooth out some of those surfaces. One consideration though is that low RPMs, you could have a drop in oil pressure because of that extra flow. So an increase of flow means you'll have a slight drop in pressure as well. But if you're gonna be racing or tracking your car, it's a good option because at those higher revs, you will be flowing more oil. But for now, I'm just gonna keep the oil pump untouched and change out the oil pump chain and the guide and the tensioner. And using the balance shaft pump, things do have to be in time. So the way I took off the factory one was these two links were lined up with the dot right here on the sprocket. And then this link up here will go to top dead center on the crank. And the sprocket sits in a little groove that you'll feel. You can see it right there, barely. And then this is just to hold the tension in while you put it in. Double checking that our chain hasn't jumped. And these are all gonna be around nine foot pounds. And when we're ready, we'll take this guy out. And now we have tension on our chain. And don't forget to remove this guy. I'm gonna install the new VTC gear, but as you can see right now, it's in the lock position. And you can tell it's locked because of this square right here where my thumb is, is tucked up perfectly in this little uh, cutout right here. When it's unlocked, that will be moved to the right. So while the car is idling or powered off, I believe it locks itself. But to install it, you need to put it in the unlocked position. Otherwise, you can apply a shear force to one of the pins in there that could damage it. We should just have to apply some compressed air to this small hole right here. The internet always makes it look easier. So I tried using all the tricks to unlock this by using an air compressor and it didn't work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this guy up, but all I need is this Torx or T30 adapter right here. And this is the locking pin mechanism right here that prevents it from rotating once it's locked and that little collar there is the locking pin and be careful because this assembly can come apart and you don't want that to happen because all of these little guides right here that separate the oil they will come out and they are spring loaded so just going to rotate it to the unlocked position i might clean up throw some of the loctite on some of these threads just so it doesn't get caught up in here
Now it's time to take the old VTC gear off. And since I will be putting a lot of torque on this and trying to hold the camshaft still, I'm gonna go ahead and take out this timing pin in the back so that way I don't just shear it straight off. But I don't want this cam to rotate much because there could be interference since the crankshaft is at top dead center. To be extra careful, you could put both cams to where none of the lobes are pushing the valves down and then make sure that all of the cylinders are away from top dead center. But I'm just gonna make sure I don't rotate the cam too much and risk it for the biscuit. So I used a 24 mil, but apparently you can also get a 23 to go around this to give you a little bit tighter of a fit. If you can find one of those, all I could find was a 24 mil, which is what Honda recommends anyways. The service manual says to oil these threads. Uh, nothing about Loctite and then we tighten it down to 83 foot pounds and we're in the unlocked position So it's good to tighten it down. Once we do have this torque down, then we will lock this cam gear Now this gear should be able to go in the locked position so it's unlocked And now it's locked and that will affect your timing. So that's why we lock it now. I need to rotate this guy counterclockwise just a little bit, and then I'll put that locking pin back in the back of the cam. While you have the chain off, I'm gonna clean up as much RTV as I can on all these surfaces. All right, with this gasket surface pretty cleaned up, it is time to put the chain on. And there's a hundred other videos online telling you how to do the timing chain on the K24 or K20, but here's another run just really quick. These top marks here, if these are lined up, that represents TDC on the cams. And then these little dots here on top of these gears represent where the chain will rest when you put it on for the first timing. And then while these are TDC, you look down here on the crankshaft and you'll see this small arrow right here pointing directly to this guy. So that means your TDC on the crank as well. And then you'll have a little dot right here on the crankshaft gear. And that is where the other color link goes. tensioner ready. I know that this is out of time, but I will fix it. So I got this guy lined up already. And this link here goes to the little dot on this gear chain. And this one I will fix right now. And then I'll put some tension on this so that way it doesn't jump. Now we're in time, we just have to torque these bolts down. These five bolts right here are all 104 pound inches. And this guy is 192 pound inches. So this tensioner works by oil pressure and some people really crank on this to make it tight. The Honda service manual doesn't mention anything about that. So I'm just gonna give it a light squeeze. Maybe try to get one click. No clicks, I'm not worried about it. I think there's plenty of tension on here for it to start up, but we just wanna make sure everything rotates smoothly and there's no interference. Just heard this guy click over once, nice and slow in case there's a valve that hits or something. This last time I will pause at top dead center. There it is. And the crank is also at top dead center. And if we look on the oil pump, since we have the balance shaft, this dot is lining up with the top dead center dot for the oil pump too. So everything's good. This also isn't a bad time to check your valve lash. So Honda recommends that kind of as a maintenance item. All you need is a feeler gauge and a special tool to loosen up this nut and simultaneously adjust that flathead right there. I don't have that feeler gauge, so I'm not gonna be doing it on mine, but down the road, I can easily just pop the valve cover off and get to it. Do not forget this guy and more RTV to clean up. <laughs> so 
So Honda gives a spec measurement for the front of the seal to the flat surface on the back of the cover. So if you put like a metal bar or something on the back, then you can just measure this depth here to that bar, 33.72. And Honda says this should be between 33 and 33.7 millimeters. You know, make sure we get all that oil and WD-40 off. I'll use some acetone. Honda's manual says if you don't put this together in four minutes, you need to redo it. I set a timer for four minutes. Four minutes, starting now. Not even close. water pump's probably fine, these usually don't go bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and replace the water pump seal. While you're here, you can also check the screen for the VTEC system. And to get to this guy, you just need to take off the tensioner. Looks really clean, that's good news. I can tell this rubber's pretty dried out, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new one of these. A little oil on the rubber will help it seal properly. Now for a rear wheel drive case swap, you probably wanna swap out the valve cover for something that has the breather relocated to somewhere on the side. So companies like K-Power and K-Tuned offer some different valve covers with different venting options. I'm gonna hold off on buying mine now because I'm gonna be taking this in and out of the car a few times and this will probably get scraped up a little bit. So get one of those to swap on and if they don't include a gasket, here is the part number for the valve cover gasket that you'll wanna swap on. And these seals right here for the spark plug tubes should probably be replaced also if you're sticking with your old valve cover. I clean the RTV off the bottom of the block while it's right side up to prevent any debris from getting into the engine. The oil pan does have a particular sequence to tighten the bolts down, taking multiple passes to slowly tighten it down. I'm pretty happy with the bead I got, but I'm gonna leave this thing upside down for a few days while that fully cures. And you can replace these, there is like a fluid damper option that can help dampen out some of the vibrations of the engine. I'm just gonna keep mine stock. If it vibrates like crazy in the car, I can always upgrade this down the road. Now Honda recommends to lubricate this bolt in a very specific way. So you wanna get oil on the threads, but leave this washer on the backside dry. And then on the backside of the washer, it says to lubricate that as well. And that'll help that torque setting that we're about to use be more accurate. The crank bolt is tightened in two stages. First, it's just the 36 foot pounds with the crank tool. Now with that torque, we need to tighten the bolt another 90 degrees. And that'll be relative to the pulley. I can't find my Sharpie, so I'm just gonna mark this guy. <sighs> 90 degrees or close enough. Oh. Now the back side of the engine, you can do the rear main seal as well while you're at it. Obviously it needs to be taken off of the engine stand, but I'll probably tackle this before I put the clutch in. So that's it for this video. We got all the internals done that we wanted to, and we're good to go now. In a future episode, I will go over dressing the engine with all the aftermarket parts that I got for it. So stay tuned, and thanks again for watching. Bye.